How are you, my darling? Very good, very good. I'm ready to fuck shit up. That's what I am. <laughs> what? So first, let me give you an introduction. Uh, second guest for tonight is the current WBA and the IBO world champion at super lightweight, Katie Reese. Hello. Come on. We should have like a cheer. I know. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so how are you, my darling? I'm good. I'm um, I'm really good. I'm feeling really. This camp is going really well. Um, I've never trained this hard in my life. I mean, I'm walking around at 144 pounds for the last three weeks. I'm just ready. I'm excited to fight. Um, I'm I'm excited knowing that Jess is gonna bring the heat. And I like talking a little shit this time around too, so I'm ready, man. I'm I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Getting spicy. A little bit. <laughs> hey, listen, it's all fun and games, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, it's all part, fun it's and part of the game. It's why it's all why I'm here. You know what I mean? Um, exploring all new new avenues of my career now, and just kind of you know maneuvering the way I need to maneuver. So you looking well. You looking very well. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm small and it's a little cold, but I'm feeling strong. It's crazy how your body adjusts um, to when you do different things. So for anybody who says they can't do something, I am a walking testament that I'm literally walking around without trying 143, 144 pounds. I've never in my entire career or my life thought that I would be able to do that and adjust comfortably. I'm so excited to fight. I'm just excited. Beautiful. So you are fight two in the road to undisputed tournament against Jessica Kamara. Oh, on the 19th of this month for the WBA, the IBO, and the vacant WBO. Tree! Tree! Tree them! Tree them! Tree them! Tree them! Tree them! Wow, wow. So firstly, let's talk about, you know, how amazing this opportunity is for you. You know, uh, now you've kind of seen fight one, has it sunk in just how momentous this whole tournament is? Absolutely, especially because I had the opportunity to actually be there during this fight. Um, you know, I was there for some work and getting some sparring there, like really good work I, I was able to get. But I was glad I was there kind of behind the scenes and, and actually got to see the fight and be a part of the whole thing because it kind of, even if Jessica was there, not my myself, it kind of brings it's more into anticipation for the fans, more anticipation for the fighters. I know Chantel's going to be at my fight, so it's just like, it's... it's spying. It's, it's, yeah, spying. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was part of the, the broadcast team on The Zone, but during their fight, they wanted me to give, like, you know, in-between round things, but I was so, like, watching so like focally like i would just like gave him like a 33 second like yeah yeah she needs to do this and just like look at it was, and then was like <laughs> i was i was i enjoyed the fight so much and it was watching i was watching from like three different angles from who i who i may potentially fight what flaws and what things that they both do good and also as a fan as a boxing fan i was there like a little fan girl like oh my god this is so amazing i was so proud of both of them for bringing the heat yes. um chantelle looked amazing mary did amazing like it was just awesome awesome to be there to be part of it so and it got me all hyped i was like let's go to the gym after but <laughs> and then you have to go home on the flight didn't you i bet there was some yeah. shadow boxing in your seat yeah. <laughs> yep it was man it was um it was amazing even the atmosphere just being around the fights in general and being around a whole fight week was cool for me like i really enjoyed that whole thing do you think it gives you a slight advantage because it is a, such a massive occasion and then maybe for the mental work it kind of just gets you in the zone yeah i mean i love just being around boxing and i have the luxury of being mm -hmm. around boxing whether it's commentating helping the coach manage you know learning the business so i don't think it's a, as an advantage especially because of the caliber of fighters that are in this tournament I mean, we all have very good teams and coaches behind us that set our game plans for whatever fight is going forward. So I don't think it was a, so much of, as an advantage. I just got to witness in real time how great they both were that night. You know what I mean? So it wasn't really an advantage because I don't know who's going to show up. Uh, I don't know kind of what Jessica's going to show up on the 19th. I don't know when I move forward and, and if I get past Jessica, what Chantel's going to show up on that night. You know, different fighters bring different things out of you. So I don't think it's an advantage. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, you, you were obviously there watching from different angles, like you said, but ha was there anything that surprised you about the fight at first? You know, well, well, first of all, what was your thoughts and was there anything that actually surprised you about about the fight? Um, I can't say surprised. I was pleasantly 
not right, but like what I pretty much thought was going to happen happened, but it exceeded my expectations, if that makes sense. Like, they both performed so well. It was an epic mm -hmm. fight from the skill, from the determination of Mary was in that fight every second. People saw it from a different angle. She was in that fight. And like I told everybody, she you're going to have to shoot her with a shotgun in order for her to quit because she does not quit. And I saw the, the engine on Chantel. I saw how, she, how focused she was. She had to think of every second of that fight. So it exceeded my expectations, but I knew it was going to be. I kept telling people, don't miss this fight. It's going to be a beef, man. It's going to be a beautiful fight, and it was. So, Yeah. What I will bring up, and I don't want to use it as an excuse, I wouldn't have brought it up if she hadn't have brought it up, uh, she being Mary. So I already knew, I kind of figured out, being a boxing person, she was struggling to make weight from a, uh, a grisly conversation. <laughs> the day before when i nearly took an uppercut yeah <laughs> from her so um but but having said that you know i wondered if that was going to be uh something that was going to hinder her in the fight an actual fact i just said to her um a, a moment ago that every time you kind of thought oh, okay she's running out of st no this girl would oh. pull some more out and pull some more out and you know, I think you're right. Some people did underestimate how much heart Mary McGee has got. Yeah, I mean, her, her engine is non-stop. Like, she's almost like me in a sense where as the rounds go on, you get stronger. But she just starts and keeps starting and keeps starting up again. And I was glad. I was so happy to see that. I mean, because Brian Cohen is also her manager and, she, you know, she's really close with Brian. They have a really good connection, a really good friendship. I was just kind of trying to stay out of the out of the loop and kind of out of the way because it was Mary and Chantel's week and it was their moment. However, I did, you know, I was there every step of the way of her doing making weight. You know what I mean? So I I knew all that, but it's none of my business. So I was just like, you know, I whoever whatever happens Saturday night, I may be fighting you. So I didn't. She's my sister. That I love Mary to death. You know what I mean? She's um a true a gem of the sport and just a really genuine good person and a good friend. So I was trying to help in any way I could. If the tables were turned and Chantel needed something that week, I'd be there. You know what I mean? Just because of the mutual respect. And um, I don't, we don't, none of us have like a, I'm going to get an advantage from being at the fight, wanting to cheat or have these cheat codes. We want every uh, honest, we want to bring our A game and we want to put it all on the table. You guys can come to my every, you can come to the gym with me every day. I don't want no, none, there's no hidden secrets because I want, I'm going to bring my best. So, um, it was an, an interesting, uh, boxing week, but, um, you know, Mary pulled through it as a, like a professional. It was tough. It was a tough week for her making the weight, but she pulled through it. You know what I mean? So I was not surprised, but I was glad to see that the weight didn't affect her as much as it probably yeah. should have. You know what I mean? Yeah, same. I, I tell you what, I, I called you guys after, and actually that was because Chantel had said to me, uh, we were in the bar, and she said, you know, get them to come down. That's how much respect that mm. um, you guys have for each other. And I think it is amazing because, listen, none of you, none of you, even Jessica, I don't think, has had, like, none of you have had opportunities just placed in your hand. You've really had to work for this, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, we clawed and scratched our way where we are now. And Chantel, in her own right, has had a hell of a career, even though it's a lot shorter than all of ours. She's kind of at the same level as far as she understands the struggle in her own right. You know what I mean? With a lot of um, females going pro now, even Katie Taylor, she doesn't understand what we had to go through as far as clawing and scratching. No, no disrespect, but to come 13, 14 years in the game, which me, Mary, and Jess, and Chantel's been in it for a while too, yo, we just know. It's like an unspoken thing that we just know where we come from. So we just know that we'll put in genuine, do the general good work to actually put on the performance. At the end of the day, um, we're all here for a reason. We're all, we're all here to put on a great show on, on Box I don't want to have an advantage, like, woo ha. Huh? You know, I don't want to cheat or anything. I just, like, I keep saying, everybody asking me, is it harder to fight your friends? Nah, because I know every, all of us, all four of us are mm -hmm. dogs. Yo, we train like dogs. I love that. I don't want. An advantage. I don't want a ten day notice opponent. I want we all had plenty of time and going into the finals we all know who we go fight, you know what I mean? So I think this is so much better. Hence the reason why I think I'm like grinding so hard. Like I have I haven't trained like this ever. This is camp has been hell on a good way. But you're buzzing. The thing is I've noticed all of all I mean obviously 
uh, I don't, Jessica doesn't really post that much anyway, but no. the, the other three of you literally quietened down and hunkered in and was like, right, we're, we're on a mission here. And, mm. and it is exciting because you want other people under the cover and see what's going on, but equally it's like, no, no, just be patient, wait mm -hmm. for fight night. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <clears throat> I've, I've seen Jess and a few of her pictures of what she has been posting here and then I'm like, yo, she's ripped. I know she's working a hella hard. It's going to be crazy. Like, I just... It doesn't scare me whatsoever. Not saying like, go oh, no, on big bad, but it excites me. This is why I'm even in boxing. You know what I mean? This is so exciting. And even with Shantel, I'm like, yo, that was great, great performance. Like, I'm so proud of both y'all. Like, I can't, I can't fucking wait until we find out yeah. who's gonna fight you. You know what I mean? Me being very confident in, in all my work and not putting anything. People kind of um, took it a wrong way. Like, I was looking past Jessica and I was looking over her. I'm not looking past her. I'm very, very aware of what I have in front of me. I have a tough night on the 19th in front of me. Mm -hmm. I did make a statement. I'll say it again here on live. I want to beat the shit out of Jessica, not because it's Jessica, but because I have a statement to make. She's going to bring the heat. I'm going to bring the heat. But I'm telling you what my goal is, is to make a hard statement and beat the shit out of her. Not because I don't like her, just because this is the business we're in. And because of my last performance, I have so many things riding for me personally. She just happens to be on the other side of my punches right now. So... No disrespect. First and, first and foremost, absolutely, first and foremost, let's, let's not get it twisted, right? If you don't have that mindset, and her, to be fair, if neither mm -hmm. of you have that mindset of, I want to beat the living daylights out, then you shouldn't be in this tournament. Should be in this tournament. I mean, a regular fight, I have a different mentality. I mean, my whole demeanor has been way different, but not in a... It's that fine line between, between walking in confidence and, and humbleness, because I'm still humble. However... I ain't never talk like this because I had never been on this level. So I just think you have to have that edge. You got to be a thug. You got to be, you got to, because if you, if we go in there like we're sparring or friends and cap gloves, it's going to be boring. No, we want to beat the shit out of each other. You know what I mean? I, I want to win this fucking tournament. So you got to have yes, that sir. little edge, man. You got to going into something like this. I'm excited. I'm so I know, excited. <laughs> I am so excited. But listen, let's talk a little bit about your, your opponent, uh, Jessica Kamara. She's had less experience than all of you. And uh, some people are saying that gives you guys a little bit more of an advantage. However, what I will say is she has improved since her uh, last fight. Has she or has she not? She has. And, and like I told everybody, I had the, uh, the pleasure of commentating her last two fights. And I've seen a big change from when she, even when she fought St. Bill, she got better from when I saw her the last time in other fights. Yes. Then, and even throughout the fight, her composure, I keep saying this, her composure is like second to none, how she keeps her poker face and stays, she listens to her corner and does her job. And when I saw her against Hardy, she got even better. She did her job. I was listening to her corner while commentating, but I was listening both to see who's, who was telling who what. And she listens. When she has smart people in a corner, she listens. And regardless of her experience, she's been pro a year more than I have. She's been pro for 14 years. So wow. Jessica's like a, a wild card. This is boxing. This is not, you know, a set-up thing. It's boxing. Boxing is a game of milliseconds and millimeters. So if I'm not on my A game, because I've been where she's at. Not saying, you know, I'm superior but i've been where I, the underdog the underrated i've been there i've been there for so long me people like mary we've been on the b side or the you know people yes. underrating for all our careers so it's almost the only advantage i think i got at this point is the fact that i've been the b side for most of my career and now i'm in a position where i'm able to make the best decision for my career and i'm in control and i have people smart people behind me i know what the fuck's going through her mind right now a lot of people who have their career built and they're just the A side are just kind of going through the motions. And I'm, yes, my name's Celia Breckis, and I'm just a good. Listen, oh, she has a career built. You know, yeah, you know, I'm just using her as an example, but you you get that false. Shut spot. Bang, bang, bang. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so like you, they ha you know you put you get into this auto like autopilot kind of like I get everything. To I know I we clawed and scratched, so that I just yes. think that makes. The backstory of the, these fights. Don't Ooh. sleep on Jessica. Don't sleep because I ain't. I ain't never slept on anybody in my life, especially her because she's a wild card and she coming. Yeah. Yeah. She ain't gonna take my belts, but she coming. She's gonna try. She, <laughs> she's gonna try. But she do you know what? The, the funny thing is, I, I, I'm joking aside, right? Uh, when people are, I always say this to fighters, when people are gifted fights or a career, don't watch that because it's, it's all the hardship that makes you such a, you know, 
you know, quality fighters. That's the first thing, right? Um, secondly, let's talk about uh, Jessica's fight against uh, St. Ville first versus the one um, against Hardy. So, massive, massive, massive difference. The one against St. Ville, she had difficulty finding her range. I think she was fine, fighting a little bit. She seemed a bit timid, mm. a bit overwhelmed by who was in front of her. I don't mean as in getting beat, but just a little bit in awe, it seemed. I don't know. Mm. Something seemed slightly off anyway. Um, and then, I think it's, what, a year later, when she fights Heather Hardy. It was a completely different fighter. Her ring general ship changed. From Ooh, year, exactly Heather. right from St. Ville to she was just kind of happy to be there and getting through the fight and doing what she could do. Like I said, I, from that fight, I never thought I'd fight her, but I was just noticing different things. And even after the fight, like telling her, you know, I noticed things just helping. Like, you should have moved this way. Or I noticed that when you move this way, things don't come off as correct. And even that's when Brian started working with her because he saw a lot of potential. He's like, yo, I, this girl, and I'm like, yo, she can really fight. But then when she came yeah. in, Cobra Kai style, owning the ring every round when she fought Hardy, I was like, okay, Jess has really been putting in some work, man, for real. <laughs> it's true. Okay. Listen, she can box. She, her judgment uh, of distance is way better than it used mm -hmm. to be. No disrespect, but it is. Uh, yeah. Her hand speed has improved. I was like, girl. Speedy, Speedy Gonzalez hands. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I literally, and this is why, this is why, uh, this this fight on the 19th is going to be such an absolute banger. I really believe it's going to be a mm -hmm. banger. Yeah, I do. I do too. I'm, ex I'm like, like Chantel says, like Mary says, I'm excited. These are fights I, I, I want. I wouldn't want it, Jessica, two or three years ago where she wasn't really knowing her range, really confident mm -hmm. in herself, owning her space in the ring. I, I don't want that. I want. I don't want somebody to just push her on, just like in sparring. You know, no, you see, I got like speedy knots everywhere because I was I just went twelve rounds with this kid in the gym that's just phenomenal. But I want that yeah. because it means I gotta step up my game. I don't wanna stay stagnant and I know Jess went to the back of the drum board and did the same thing because it showed when she fought Cardi. Yeah. What's uh, what's quite amazing is so um uh, after um Chantal's fight in the press conference, Jamie said he had a sparring with certain people that he hadn't had a sparring with before, mm -hmm. you know, and then you you sort of disappeared and we don't see anything and all of a sudden it's like you come over here and you start beating our girls up. Shame on you. I didn't <laughs> beat anybody up, man. I got really good work out there. I did forty rounds damn near in three days. I didn't they go like Kate, Kate and Reese says, can you come for sparring? <laughs> 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 yeah.